All right, so we talked at length about the wave description of light. So now we're going to talk uh, somewhat briefly about the particle description of light that somewhat opposes the wave description. So we know that each frequency of light corresponds to a certain color. Uh, this We're only going to talk about visible light for this, but I can also say each frequency of electromagnetic radiation corresponds to a certain type of radiation. We'll stick with light here. So each frequency has a set color and that corresponds to a set amount of energy. Okay, So we know that there is a direct proportion between frequency and energy. So I could say direct proportion between let's say frequency and we'll abbreviate energy capital E. So that means when frequency goes up, energy goes up. Uh, and there's an inverse proportion between wavelength and energy. So when energy goes, excuse me, when wavelength increases, energy decreases there. So Knowing this, there were several experiments done. Uh, the most uh, impressive experiment here is an experiment that proved what we call the photoelectric effect. Before we talk about that, let's do a couple of vocab words though. So what we call particles of light, we call them photons. Okay. So photons at this point were the theoretical um, little pieces of light, the little particles of light, but now we know they um, They've been proven to be true, so they're no longer theoretical. At this point in time, the early 1900s, uh, they were a term used to describe what we you know, thought were the particles of light. So these particles, we call photons, we also call them quanta of light. So a quanta is a very small piece of something, the smallest piece we can have. Uh, they were actually corresponded to the minimum amount of energy that can be gained or lost by an atom. Okay? So a quanta of light corresponded to the minimum amount of energy that could be gained or lost. So we know that light is a form of energy there, so those could be used fairly interchangeably. So knowing this, and more specifically knowing that energy and frequency are directly proportional, we can do calculations to convert from frequency to energy. So the formula that we use for that is we have a capital E, which stands for energy, equals H times V. So we know a couple of these uh, symbols. We know E is energy and capital J which is a joule is the unit that we most commonly use for energy. We know that the what we write as V, uh, the Greek letter actually is, we'll just write V though, corresponds to frequency. So we abbreviate that HZ or 1 over seconds. What we don't know is H. So H is Planck's constant. So I'll abbreviate that PC. It's a constant that was derived for these calculations. So Planck's constant is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. So kind of like the speed of light, it's a number that is always true and we can use it in the calculations. So if we look at the calculation just with the units, we have joules times second, our constant, times one over seconds or number of seconds, so we're left with joules. So the formula um, works very well there. Again, we need to make sure that our units for frequency are actually in hertz and not kilohertz or megahertz, and if so, we will need to calculate back and forth for that. And so this formula being true kind of shows us that we are in fact correct, that frequency and energy are directly proportional. So let's look for a second though before we deal with these calculations where we proved that photons actually exist and how we proved that light actually does have some sort of particle nature. So this is the work that won Einstein his Nobel Prize. So we are all familiar with Einstein. He's known mostly for his theories of relativity, but they were proven uh, after his death. So. He never won a Nobel Prize for that. However, he did win a Nobel Prize for these simple, or not simple, these, they seem simple today, uh, ideas and concepts about light. So what he observed and what other scientists observed was known as the photoelectric effect. So what the photoelectric effect was is if you had a metal sheet and you shine certain colors of light on that sheet. So let's just say on this example, we've shown red light okay, on that piece of metal, whatever it might be. No matter how bright we get the light, no matter how intense the light is, we can never cause electrons to be released from this sheet of metal. 
but if you shine other types of light, such as violet, on the same metal sheet, you can get electrons to be ejected. Okay, and they can be picked up by a, uh, another sensor over here that would complete a circuit. So simply, what the photoelectric effect is, is it showed that okay, certain colors of light are able to eject electrons from a piece of metal. There's something that is hitting that piece of metal that is knocking out an electron and causing it to be ejected. But not all colors of light can. Only certain colors of light for certain metals. And they found that there is no correspondence between the intensity of light for some colors and its ability to uh, eject an electron. So it kind of be easy to think if you just get the red light brighter and brighter and brighter, maybe, maybe eventually something will happen, but that wasn't the case. So this further goes to prove that there is a correspondence between energy and wavelength here. But it also shows that there is some sort of particle aspect to light. There is something about this light wave that is hitting this metal plate and causing electrons to be knocked out or ejected. Okay? So the photoelectric effect is what we call this. And this is what Einstein described to prove that there actually is a particle nature of light. So this does not disprove everything in the last video about the wave nature of light. Okay? It simply adds to it. So now we know that light has characteristics called duality, or a characteristic called duality. So it has characteristics of a wave and a particle. And the same is true for electrons. Okay, so before we apply what we've learned about light being a wave and a particle to descriptions of electrons, let's look at a few simple calculations using the E equals HV formula to calculate the energy of light. So let's look at the first example in the notes, calculate the energy in joules of a quantum of radiant energy. So the quantum is just a little piece, so a quantum we could equate to a photon here that has a frequency of 5.00 times 10 to the 15th hertz. Okay, So we'll say V equals 5.00 times 15 times 10 to the 15th hertz. Okay. So I'm asking for energy, so the formula I used to calculate energy is E equals HV. So I do some simple algebra, um, or actually there's no algebra required here, sorry. We're asking for energy, so the formula is already solved correctly. So I can say E equals Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds, times 5.00 times 10 to the 15th hertz. Our hertz is one over seconds. It's easier to see if you're writing in one over seconds that seconds cancels one over seconds. So go ahead and plug that in your calculator. Okay, so what you should get when you type that in, I'm sorry, let me try it again. I hit the wrong button. Is 3.31 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. So notice Planck's constant is a constant, so we ignore significant digits for that. There were three significant digits in the original problem, so seconds cancel seconds. I'm left with units of joules there. So notice 10 to the negative 18th power is a very, very, very small number. Okay? So this is a very, very tiny amount of energy. Okay? So the visible light spectrum deals with um, electromagnetic radiation that is not super high in energy. That's why and it was safe for us to be around. Gamma radiation, for example, would be much higher in energy. Uh, we can't be around the type of radiation very often, like X-ray radiation and other high energy types, because it changes the DNA structure in our um, cells, and it causes damage and leads to cancer and other kind of issues. So just be aware that you'll get numbers with very large negative exponents here for energies, because these or excuse me, these waves are particles of light do have such low energy here. So let's go ahead and look at one more. Um, I'll leave the second one for you to try. You can calculate that fairly easily. Actually the third one is pretty similar. So let's look at one that's a little trickier. We'll make one up. So we'll say what is the energy and I'll just say electromagnetic radiation 
that word with light can be used interchangeably here. What's the energy of electromagnetic radiation? We have a wavelength of 575 nanometers. Okay. So I'm asking for energy. So I need to use the formula E equals HV. But I don't have a frequency, so that's an issue. Okay. But luckily, I have the formula C equals wavelength times frequency that I can plug in and use this to solve for frequency and then plug that in to solve for energy. So let's use this formula first. So I need to use this formula to solve for the frequency of this light because I know that every wavelength corresponds to a certain frequency. So I can rearrange this into frequency equals the speed of light divided by wavelength. So I can say frequency equals 3.0 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by, so hopefully you recognize there's an issue here. I have nanometers. I need to be in meters. They have to cancel out. So I must do a conversion. 575 nanometers. So I have nanometers, meters. I know that nanometers corresponds to 10 to the negative 9. I put the 1 beside the number with the prefix, put the number beside the base unit. So I type that in the calculator. Or you can probably do that one in your head. And it'll come out to 5.75 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Okay, so I have that as my wavelength that I can actually use in this problem now. So I go ahead and write down 5.75 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. So now meters and meters will cancel and I'll be left with inverse seconds, which is a hertz is what I'm looking for. So go ahead and type that in your calculator. Okay, and you should get 5.217, we'll say 39, times 10 to the 14th, 1 over seconds. Notice I didn't round off two correct significant digits here. Typically, what we do is we round off our significant digits at the end of the problem. We only round when we're completely done. So what I'm going to do here, I'll go ahead and circle this. This is my frequency. Okay. So I wrote it down, which you should on your paper. I just wrote it down several decimal places. But you should also hold this number in your calculator. Okay. So I'm just going to keep this number in my calculator. So when I go ahead and do the next calculation, I can just carry this number forward and I have to type all that in again and I'll have a more accurate answer. So now I have a frequency. So I can plug in this formula here. So I have E equals HV. So energy equals Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds times 5.217 dot 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 times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds. So it's important to write this down here to show your work and make sure you're on the right track, but there's no point in copying all this number down because I held it in the calculator here, okay? So if you don't do that, then yes, you would need to copy that whole number down there. So go ahead and type this in the calculator and see what you get. Okay, so when you type that in, you should get three point, a bunch of stuff, times 10 to the negative 19 joules. I'm going to go back up to my original problem and say 575 has three significant digits. So I'll round this off to three significant digits. 3.46 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And that's my correct answer, correct final answer. So there's a lot going on here. First, I have a metric conversion. Then I must solve for frequency. Then I have to plug into the energy formula. Then I have to round, round to the correct number of significant digits. Okay, so there is a lot going on here. So it's good that you show your work each step. Maybe even label your steps. Here I'm doing a metric conversion. Here I'm converting to frequency. Here I'm solving for energy. So you keep straight what's going on. So now hopefully we have a pretty full idea of light. And when I say light, that I really refer to all electromagnetic radiation and its properties primarily as a wave, but also we can appreciate that it has properties of a particle and also these two calculations that we can do in order to calculate wavelength or frequency from the other and then use one of those to calculate energy. Okay? And also we can't forget that each color of light or each type of electromagnetic radiation corresponds to a certain wavelength a certain frequency, and a certain energy. Okay? So 
So every color of light has a specific wavelength, energy, and frequency. And as long as we have one of those, we can use it to convert to the other two there. So we'll stop here. And in the next video, we'll begin to look at what in the world this, all this stuff about light has to do with electron configuration. Because we started this chapter with the ultimate goal of figuring out how electrons are laid out in an atom. So in the next video, we'll dive into how I use all this information that I have on light that really seems kind of out of place here. And I'll look at how I put that into a bigger picture of electron configuration.